One of the biggest things that separates a junior developer from a more advanced developer is how they handle errors. Most junior developers don't even think about errors and don't do any error handling at all. And if you do that in React, your application is going to look something like this. As you can see, as soon as you run into your very first error, the entire application goes entirely blank and that is obviously a terrible user experience. So in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to do error handling in React with error boundaries. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And for this video, we have a really simple application. If I refresh my page on the right, you see we have some loading text and we're just loading in some information asynchronously in our application. As you can see, really super straightforward what's happening. And if we look at the code for it, it's also relatively straightforward. We just have some data components that are rendering different types of data based on the type that I pass in. And inside this component, it's using this brand new use hook inside of React to get that data asynchronously. If you're not familiar with the use hook, I have an entire video covering it. I'll link in the cards in the description. And I even have a completely free React hook simplified course that covers every hook in React. I'll link that down in the description as well for you. But essentially what this does is it gets some data asynchronously for us. And I also added in the ability to simulate what happens in the case of an error. So if we come in here, we can add that to any of these. We can just say has error, and that's going to simulate what happens if we throw an error from our request because it's a bad request. And now when I save, you can see we're going to get an error and the entire application goes completely blank. And if I inspect and I look at my console, you can see we obviously have errors inside here, which is not great. Now, you already know that there are lots of different ways that I could handle this type of error. For example, if I'm making a fetch request, I could just do a dot catch on my promise to catch the error that way, or I could do that with any promise really, but a fetch request is kind of the most logical thing you think of. And you can handle the error directly inside the component where you're making that request. But sometimes that's not always the best route because now you have error logic and loading logic and all that inside your component, which really muddies things up a little bit which is where error boundaries come in. They're really great for catching errors by catching them inside your component without actually being part of your component because they live outside of your component. Now, I know that sounds kind of confusing, but let me show you exactly what an error boundary is. I actually have one written up here for you so you don't have to watch me type it, but essentially an error boundary is just a component that you create inside of React. So here's a really simple example of one. You'll notice that this is actually a class component. And that's because to create an error boundary, it must be a class component because you need to take advantage of this method right here that's built into a class component. So before I dive into exactly what this code's doing, let me explain the purpose of an error boundary. An error boundary has this method right here called get derived state from error. And anytime this component or any components that are children of this component throw an error, what's going to happen is instead of, you know, completely wiping out your application, as you can see on the right here, what's going to happen is it's going to call this method right here. And it's going to allow you to update the state of this component based on the error that happened. In our case, we're not even using the error. All we're doing is we're just moving around a toggle that says, do we have an error or not? That's the only thing in the state for this component. We're just saying, has there been an error or not? If this function right here gets called, that means that somewhere in our application, whether it's this component or any of the children of this component, there was an error, so we set this to true. And then in our component, the only thing we care about is this props for fallback. We're just passing a fallback component along with it so we can say, if there's an error, render out this fallback data, otherwise render out the children. Let me show you how this looks when we actually want to use this. Let's say I come inside of here and this is the component that I'm having the problems with. So I'm just going to wrap it inside my error boundary. So I can say error boundary, just like that. Wrap my entire component inside of that. And I need to make sure that I import this error boundary. So we can just say import error boundary from, and I want to get it from dot slash error boundary, just like that. So I give this a quick save and I refresh my page over here. You're going to see that now it's rendering out the text error. And that's because what's happening is inside my data component, I have an error being thrown. And my error boundary is actually wrapping that data component. So what's happening is in my error boundary, if we open that back up here, this it derived state from error is being called with our error. And we're saying, hey, there has been an error. So that's set to true. Now our component re-renders because the state has changed. It says that if we've had an error is true, then it renders this fallback. Otherwise, we're just normally rendering the children. So by default, this component does nothing because all it does is render out the children until an error happens in your application. And then what's going to happen is it's going to render whatever fallback you pass to that actual component. This is why it's really important that you wrap specific sections of your application and error boundaries. For example, each one of these cards I should wrap inside of its own error boundary. Let me just do that real quick. There we go. So now, no matter what happens, if any of these fail, I'm just going to get the text error instead of something else bad happening, like my application going entirely blank. Another really good use case for an error boundary is actually to wrap your entire application. So here where we have our app, 
it makes a lot of sense to wrap the entire thing inside of this error boundary. Let me just make sure I import that and I close it off. And then you can put something inside of here like there was an error. And now no matter what happens in your application, the user will be notified because you're saying, hey, there's been some type of error, let the user know. So if I remove these other error boundaries, for example, here, and now we have that error that occurs, you're gonna see it's gonna fall back to that main error boundary that I have wrapping my entire application. And I almost always recommend wrapping your entire application in some type of error boundary, just to make sure that people know that there has been an error. So that's kind of the main use cases for the error boundary. So I wanna go back into the error boundary to really talk about exactly what's going on inside of here to go a little bit further. So we already know that this function right here gets called anytime your component in the children has an error. And another method that automatically gets called is this component did catch. This will also get called every single time that there's an error the same way that this function right here gets called. But the main difference is while this is for updating your state as the name implies, this function is actually for running specific code. In most cases, this is gonna be like sending off a log to your server or making some type of log in your database. Right now, we're just logging out this information to the console. If we inspect the page and we look at the console, you can see that it's printing out here, the error message that we're getting, as well as an object that contains the entire stack trace for where that error came from. So we can see the component stack, so we can see what components actually caused this error to happen. So the combination of these two different functions is really crucial because this first function allows you to render out some fallback data. Most often when you create an error boundary, you're just gonna give it a simple true false state, and then you're gonna pass in a prop for the fallback. But you can obviously make this component as complex or simple as you want. This is probably one of the more simple use cases, but 99% of the time, that's really all you need. Then this second function right here is really useful for any logging or reporting systems that you have. You can actually make sure you log those errors to your reporting system, and then you can go check those and you can see exactly what's happening in your application. You'll have the component stack, you'll have the error, it'll give you all the information you need. And that's all there is to error boundaries in React. If you want to learn more about that use hook or any other React hook, I highly recommend checking out my completely free React hook simplified course. It'll be linked down in the description for you. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.